Hey, it's Aaron Kushler and welcome to another video from EBSC. This is the third episode in a mini series showing you how to incorporate strongman training into your current routine even while you're still doing CrossFit. If you haven't checked out the first two episodes, make sure you go and check those out as there's plenty of tips and tricks of how to start incorporating this style of training for yourself. However, in this particular video, we're gonna be going over strongman pulling events and how you can incorporate those into your program. As you can see, we've got a few things on the board here that we're gonna be actually going through in this video. First up, we're gonna start with the various types of pulling movements. What are they? What are the benefits of them? Then we're gonna follow that up with intensity protocol. So how you go about finding out how much weight to base your intensities off. So what's the starting point? Then we're gonna be going through protocols for strength, endurance, and conditioning. So how you can actually manipulate everything that we're gonna be talking about to have these specific outcomes. So whether you wanna focus on conditioning, you know, your strength or endurance, how you can actually go about doing that. Then we're gonna have some examples of each. So obviously once I show you how to actually set that up, I'm gonna give you a couple of examples for each one. And then we're gonna go through how to actually fit it into your training plan. So what's it gonna look like in terms of a whole weekly structure and how's that gonna work in with the rest of your training? So that's what we're gonna cover. We've got a lot to get through, but if you've wanted to start incorporating this into your training, this is gonna be really helpful for you. All right, so behind me on the board, I've got some examples of strongman pulling movements that you can start to incorporate. Now, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just some examples that you can start with right now and ones that are sort of easy enough to implement into your current training. So to start things off, we've got the tire or the sled pull. So that's involving the arms where you might be sitting down on the ground and you're pulling the sled towards you. So these are really great as a conditioning tool as well as building up strength for the upper body. Uh, particularly is a good substitute for rope climbs. If you haven't got them yet, this is another great alternative. The next one is sled rows or face pulls. So this is a common area that most people could improve on, um, which is gonna help your shoulder health as well as build up the strength of your upper back. So you're pulling the sled or the handles of the sled towards your face or towards your side. So you're basically pulling using the upper back. So then we move on to the lower body ones. And this is where we start incorporating obviously the lower body, but we start to really mix things up in terms of variety. We start things off with the forward sled pull. So this is a really simple one you can get started with, putting a strap around your waist and literally just pulling the sled along behind you. You can alternatively wear a harness if you've got that um, at your gym. This is also very similar and the, the sort of the upgrade to that then is our next one, the car or the truck pull. So this usually involves both the legs and the arms because you've got a rope that you've also got available to actually help you pull the truck or the car along. So that's another upgrade from the Ford sled pull and it incorporates both the arms and the legs. Following on from that, we've got the backward sled pull. So this is a really commonly seen event in strongman where they're carrying or they're picking up a heavy implement and basically dragging it backwards, hanging on with the arms and using the legs uh, to, to basically propel them backwards as fast as they can. So this is obviously replicated by using a sled and this time we're just holding on to the straps and we're dragging it back as quickly as we can. And then we've also got deadlift variations. Now I haven't listed all the variations because there's so many different types. So whether it be like farmer's handle deadlifts, you might do a car deadlift if you've got access to that. It could be trap bar deadlifts, you know, you name it. Whatever you can basically pick up from the ground to a standing position is gonna be beneficial. So now that we know what some of the different types of movements are, how do we then know how heavy we need to go to use these? Well, there's a couple of ways that you can use to gauge how much weight you should use. Firstly, for a lot of the pulling movements that involve dragging something along the ground, we might use method one. So we're gonna test the max weight over a distance of 100 feet or 30 meters. So then once you've got the max weight that you can travel that distance, you can then use an example like 40% of your max weight. So that's very similar to your barbell movements using a 1RM percentage. The second way you can do this is to use a percentage of body weight. So for an example, if you had 50% of your body weight on a sled and you weigh 90 kilos, you'd have 45 kilos on the sled. 
Now that we know how to set the weights according to our max or our body weight, let's look at how we can incorporate that into different protocols for different outcomes. Let's take a look at some of these examples. So first up, we've got strength. So when we're working for strength, we're gonna use short distances or low reps. So by the shorter distance, we're going anything 30 meters or less, and for the reps, anything six or lower. So similar to your barbell movements. We're gonna be going with heavy weights. So once we've worked out what our max is over that 30 meter distance, we're now you're gonna use 85% or above for any of those type of movements. And we're gonna have long rests. So two to four minutes, or you know, depending on how taxed you are, that might be longer. If we then jump into endurance, so we're obviously training with very different protocols for endurance, we're gonna be looking at long distance, high reps, or a long period of time. So anywhere between 100 to 800 plus meters, we're gonna be going 20 reps or above, and anything greater than a minute. So if we're using these movements to develop endurance, we're obviously going for longer periods of time than a minute, so anywhere upwards of that. We're gonna be using lighter weights, so 50% or lower. We don't wanna be using really heavy movements for developing endurance because we're just gonna run ourselves into the ground. And we're gonna have very short rest periods. So as we said in our previous video, if we're doing something that's say 800 meters long and you, you get 200 meters into it, and you have to put it down, that's fine and you can do that. We're gonna use less than uh, one minute rest. So you might rest 30 seconds or you might even rest 10 seconds, you'll pick it up and continue. Moving on to conditioning. So this is where things get changed up quite a bit. So we've got a lot of play with conditioning because depending on where your strengths and weaknesses lie, will determine what sort of conditioning protocols you're gonna use. So we're gonna be talking about here, mixed distances, time, and reps. So these could be all different things. Moderate weights, so we're looking between the 50 to 60% uh, percent range. It doesn't have to be that, that's just a guide. And then we've got mixed rest intervals. So there's a number of ways you can set this up. So you can use something like an EMOM every minute on the minute. You could do things like an AMRAP, or you can just do a work to rest ratio. So all of these allow you to manipulate depending on what your goals are. Now let's take a look at some examples that you can work with. On the board here, I've got two examples for each outcome that we want. So strength, endurance, and conditioning. So if we look at the strength first up, we've got something like sled rows, and we're gonna do four sets of 30 meters at 85% of our max resting two minutes in between. So we're using the protocols that we went through just before to apply it to a specific movement. Much the same as the tire pull. So this time we're gonna go three sets of 15 meters and we're going for max weight. So in three sets, what's the most amount of weight we can move over 15 meters? Then if we take a look at endurance, so the, it changes up slightly. We've got forward sled pull. We're gonna go two sets of 800 meters with 50% of our body weight. So 50% your body weight, load it up on the sled. Again, remember, you don't have to do 800 meters straight. Wherever you stop, keep the rest times uh, really short. Then we go on to something like a standing tire pull. So we're using 30% of body weight here. We're gonna do four sets of one minute rounds with 30 seconds rest. We've changed up the parameters here. We're not working for a distance or for reps. We're working for time, so one minute with 30 seconds rest. So we've kept that rest period quite short. Then we move into conditioning. So again, with conditioning, you've got a lot more play. You can start to mix and match a lot of things and we've got different formats. So I've given you two formats here. We've got an AMRAP first and then an EMOM second. With the AMRAP, the way this one works, so it's 10 minutes, we've got a standing tire pull. So we're using 30 meters. So we've basically borrowed what we had in the endurance using 30% of body weight times one. So if your rope is, is 15 meters long, that's as far as you're gonna do it. Your second movement is a backwards sled pull. So 30 meters with 60% of your body weight. And then you've got five deadlifts at 50% of one RM. Okay, so you'd work through from A to B to C and then repeat the process as many times through as you can in 10 minutes. Moving on, we go to an EMOM style. So every minute on the minute. So you'd set a timer for 12 minutes and you have the, the beeper going every minute. At each beep, you've got to complete a forward sled drag with 60% of your max and we're just gonna do a distance of about 30 meters. So each time that, that timer goes, you go as well. Whatever time you've got left after completing that is your rest time. 
Now that we can see some examples of each of these, how do you go about actually working this in with the rest of your training? Well, to begin with, for strength, if we're gonna use these to build strength, I would couple them in on the same days that you train strength. They work really well as assistance movements to help balance out the strength training that you're doing. For example, if you have a day where you're going in and you're doing a lot of pressing or push jerks, for instance, having a strength movement such as a tire pull or even a sled row is a really good option on that day as it helps increase the strength of your upper back and then that's gonna assist your pressing movements as a whole. Next, we have endurance. So for our endurance components, we're gonna use these as workout finishes to help build mental toughness. These also work really well as a way to work on your weak points, such as with sled dragging, it's gonna help build up the strength and endurance of your glutes and your hamstrings. If you are gonna use these as a workout finisher, try to select a movement that closely mimics what you've been doing in your strength work. So for example, if you have a day where you're going in and doing a lot of posterior chain work, maybe you're doing some Olympic lifts, you might be doing some deadlifts on that day, adding in a movement such as sled drags is a really good option. Then finally, we have the conditioning options. So the conditioning options can be added in most days of the week. They can work really well as the main conditioning piece in your workout, or alternatively, you can extend them a little bit and have that as your entire workout for that day. This works really well if you know you've only got a small amount of time to train and you still wanna cover a lot of things, as it's gonna allow you to get a lot of work done in a very short amount of time. You can adjust the time as needed, as well as the movements so that you're working multiple parts of the body. So there you have it. Now you can use this information to start adding these into your program and work on your strength, your endurance, and your conditioning. I regularly use these methods with myself and my clients, and I've seen really great results with them already. If you're wanting to add more of this type of training into your routine, build your strength further, as well as join a team who are really striving for that next level, you might be a great fit for my coaching program, the 10X Strength Project. If you wanna find out more, just send an email to the email shown below and I'll be in contact with you shortly. And of course, if you like this video and you found it helpful, make sure you click that like button, subscribe to the channel so that you stay up to date with all the content that I'm gonna be releasing. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.